What's up guys, Eber here with High Rekin X and gaming notebooks have come a long way. We have the entry level gaming notebook starting at $1,000 that can play modern titles at low settings with reasonable frame rates. And then comes the mid tier laptops that start at $1,500 to $1,700 that can do 60 frames per second at medium. And then comes the high end gaming notebooks that start at $2,000 and can go all the way up to $5,000. And these notebooks are capable of playing games in 4K. One of my favorite things about technology every year is that products become more efficient, faster, and the best part is that we're starting to see desktop class graphics migrating into the mobile space. And this in turn shrinks the performance delta between desktops and notebooks. That being said, the price to performance ratio still lies heavily upon the shoulders of desktop PCs, and you will still need to make some pretty large financial sacrifices uh, if you want to combine portability with high in-game frame rates. Silverstone reversible cables feature beautiful aluminum housing in various colors and nylon braiding for protection with reversible USB 2.0 on one end for the really easy plug and play and on the other end available in both lightning connector for the iPhone or reversible micro USB. Get your cables now with the link below. We're taking a look at three notebooks today that occupy the high end space and we're also interested to see what similarities and differences they share. Welcome to the HyperConnex showdown between these three powerhouses. Pricing and specifications first. Let's start with the Eurocom Sky X9. This thing is a monster. It's rocking an i7-6700 desktop processor, 32GB of fast 2400MHz memory, and two GTX 980M 8GB GPUs in SLI. Perhaps the crowning or pointless addition here is the 4K IPS panel, and I'll talk about that in a bit. We also have a standalone desktop class GTX 980 with an MXM 3.0 add-in card, so we can test frame rates with what amounts to less expensive option in Eurocom's extensive setup page. Now, these specs are very impressive, but as configured, it tops out at around $5,000. And if you take some time browsing through Eurocom's website, you can pick and choose which parts need to go in, but most importantly, the upgrades are horribly high in price. Moving on to the next notebook, um, did you notice a change? This is the Origin Eon 17 SLX gaming notebook. Uh, from all angles, it looks identical to the Eurocom Sky X9, as both uh, are using a generic Sager Source chassis and the motherboard combo, upon which they install components. This means both will likely perform the same, and when it comes to things like keyboard, trackpad, and speakers, and build quality, they're all the same. And the third contender is the MSI GT72 Dominator Pro. It's the least expensive gaming notebook out of the three, and you do get a lot for the price. A GTX 980, 32GB of RAM, 17.3 inch 1080p IPS display with G-Sync, and a refresh rate of 75Hz. And unlike the other notebooks, MSI opted for a Core i7-6820HK mobile CPU, unlike the desktop class grade chips on the other two. All three notebooks come with a base M.2 256GB SSD, and on top of that you get a standard 1TB hard drive, and speed-wise the MSI seems to have the fastest SSD on the market available, while the Eon has the 950 Pro and the X9 sports a newer but slower SM951 SSD. Build and design is the next. The Sager Source chassis on the X9 and the Eon 17 is a fully plastic affair, but that doesn't mean that the build quality suffers. There's very little top cover flex, and with the laptop weighing about 10 pounds and 2 inches thick, Eurocom needed to add structural stability to ensure damage wouldn't occur when this monster is being carried around. I appreciate the matte surface for some stealth character with having an X lighting strip on the top cover that can cycle colors. Inside, it's the same matte black finish. The palm rest is very stiff, although it picks a ton of fingerprints. The keyboard and trackpad aren't anything spectacular. It looks basic and performs like that. The backlighting lacks features and I wish they added macro buttons on the side or any value added shortcut functions. All this applies to the Eon 17 SLX as well, although Origin offers a custom paint option which will cost extra. The typing and gaming experience on this keyboard was fine but not totally satisfactory. The keys lack sufficient travel and bounce back is sluggish. This all leads to a mushy feeling which certainly hurts typing and gaming. 
The trackpad, however, is pretty great. The surface is smooth, plus you gotta appreciate quality physical primary buttons with great feedback, and they are so much easier to use compared to the tap gestures on Windows 10. Palm rejection ended up being a bridge too far, and the fingerprint reader never worked properly on the X9, uh, but just fine on the Eon 17. Swinging at the I.O., it's a copy and paste situation between the two. We have a pair of LAN ports that connect directly to the killer NIC, a trio of USB 3.0 ports, one of which features supercharging capabilities, and jacks for headphones, a mic, line-in, and SPDIF on the left side. To the right, we have two mini DisplayPort 1.2 ports, a combo USB 3.1 Type-C slash Thunderbolt connector, uh, another USB 3.0 port, and an SD card reader. The rear-facing area is mostly designed for ventilation, but you'll find a power input, another USB 3.0 port, an HDMI 1.4 output, and honest opinion, I would have preferred one of the mini DisplayPort connectors here. I like how Eurocom and Origin encourages you to upgrade their notebooks as we did not spot a warranty void if removed sticker. But taking a peek inside the X9, you see a pair of GTX 980M cards installed on the left side of the motherboard while the 6700 desktop CPU is enjoying its own dedicated heatsink in the upper right hand corner. The memory is accessible, but the storage drives and the M.2 slots are located below the battery, so getting to them will require the removal of a few more screws. Overall, it's a very clean and organized pathway to upgrade components in the future. On the Eon 17, the layout is a little different since we have a desktop class GTX 980. Basically, the GPU uses a single contact plate which transmits its heat to a set of large heat pipes and then onto the integrated fin array in the front of the left fan. The MSI Dominator Pro definitely stands out from the other two laptops. For one thing, this beast is more portable at 8 pounds compared to 10 on the other two. It's also built really well. There's barely any flex on the chassis and that's appreciated. Physical character here is very much different compared to the understated body of the Origin and the Eurocom notebooks. This one is taking a more gamerish route. This is the Dragon Edition with a red metallic plastic lid and an etched dragon print with a glowing eye. The theme continues on the inside with the dragon design on the palm rests, and I'm pretty sure most of you guys love the red and black color scheme uh, that's going on here. MSI has done a fantastic job with the keyboard layout with function keys off to the left that I'll get to in a moment. The palm rest is very stiff, it's built like a tank, and I have to admit, I enjoy typing this review and gaming on this laptop a lot. It does tend to pick up grease from your sweaty hand, but luckily it can easily be cleaned. And while we're on the topic of typing and gaming on the Dominator Pro, why don't we just talk about that keyboard? It's a remarkable collaborative effort between MSI and SteelSeries, and it's freaking amazing. The keys are properly separated, and while the travel distance is short, the keys have excellent tactile feedback with instant bounce back. The cherry on top of this is the incredible and robust software that allows for easy macro editing, RGB backlit modification and profile setup. The keys are lined with a very thin layer of silver which allows the backlit to shine through its natural form and it looks gorgeous especially in the dark. There are two subtle lighting strips on the bottom that adds an extra layer of bling since RGB is the thing these days. I also enjoyed listening to soundtracks from the integrated speakers. There's a whole strip above the keyboard which is designed by the folks over at DIN Audio. It's backed up with a downwards firing subwoofer and man, I haven't experienced audio from a laptop like this before. Let's take a listen. The four buttons towards the left side of the keyboard, excluding the power button, are pre-configured and cannot be modified. I wish I could have. That being said, they do offer some additional control over the notebook right at your fingertips. Button 1 switches between the integrated and discrete GPU. Button 2 cycles through different fan profiles. Button 3 allows for quick boost of XSplit game streaming. And Button 4 cycles through different lighting presets within the chassis. Amazing job, MSI. Looking at the I.O., we have four USB 3.0 ports, gold-plated audio connectors, and an SD card reader on the left side. The right area holds two more USB 3.0 ports and a DVD drive, which we think does not belong on a gaming laptop in 2016. At the back, we have a mini display port, USB 3.1 Type-C port, 
HDMI 1.4, Ethernet jack, and power in. Placement of these is more ideal compared to the Sager body with majority of bulky cables hidden behind the computer. Unfortunately, MSI doesn't want you to upgrade the storage or memory. But ignoring that, I plunged my screwdriver through the warranty sticker to see what's inside. The layout is definitely different from the X9. The hard drive can be accessed on the left as well as the M.2 SSDs. The memory is also accessible without too much trouble. Both the GPU and CPU are cooled separately with large fans and proper heat sinks and they are positioned in the best possible way to let hot air exhaust through the back. Alright, display and gaming performance next. The Origin and MSI models have the exact 1080p 17 inch 75Hz IPS panel with an integrated G-Sync module, while Eurocom boasts a 60Hz 4K IPS display, hence the hefty price tag. If you're a content creator like me, you'd appreciate the 10-bit performance from the X9 since it covers 100% of the Adobe RGB spectrum versus 70% on the other two. But if you're after gaming, going for a faster and G-Sync equipped 1080p display is the best option. The 10-bit panel on the Sky X9 does have slightly better contrast and brightness output, but the other two notebooks are not bad at all for gaming. Now, 4K is a hot topic these days, and companies are starting to use these screens as a means of marketing. While it is true that you get a lot more detail and real estate when working, I just don't see the point of implementing that into a notebook because window scaling is not caught up to be enjoyable. Plus, it's very difficult to drive this resolution even with a pair of 980Ms. Why don't we take a look at some benchmarks? These results are pretty much expected. The 6700K and the Origin is the clear winner here since it's overclocked while the 6700 uh, and the much lower 6820HK falls behind. Testing the memory, the Sky X9 pulls a little ahead due to its higher frequency modules. One thing to note is that the Origin is equipped with 16GB of RAM while the other two with 32GB. So you can see we're not testing capacity, rather the total bandwidth. The Toshiba NVMe SSD within MSI's Dominator is exponentially fast and it destroys the 950 Pro and the SM951 SSDs. However, the SM951 was able to overcome the other drives in right-focused tests. 3D Mark's synthetic benchmark results don't typically translate into actual in-game performance, but they can be used for a reasonable good metric of where the notebooks will stand in relation to one another. That means the beastly SLI setup from Eurocom trumps all corners while the overclocked Origin is able to overcome the Dominator. So now comes the best part, gaming performance. The Sky X9's expensive GTX 980M SLI setup was able to top out at 1080p on most titles, but for a few due to some SLI gaming profile issues. This is always the case for multi-GPU configurations, so it shouldn't come as a surprise. When it was replaced with a single 980, the performance was lower but it was consistent across the board. The Eon 17 SLX was a beast pulling great numbers while the slower processor on the MSI notebook did drag down its performance. Still, the frame rates are completely playable at ultra settings. At 1440p, they all perform really well once again, but we're starting to see all three notebooks closing the gap within each other. Moving on to 4K and the Sky X9 does start to show signs of struggle rendering at that resolution. Even the SLI configuration requires tweaking within the games to hit playable frame rates. Once again, all three notebooks deserve sincere recognition for what they can output with the given hardware. Testing the battery, it is to be expected that the MSI is the clear winner here considering a more power efficient CPU. Expect around 3 hours of browsing the web on the MSI and by doing the same task on the other two with the desktop class processor and two GPUs, it's guaranteed to give you limited time. Taking a look at CPU temperatures, the MSI once again shines here like a star, especially with custom fan profile configuration. The Sky X9 surprisingly showed lower idle temperatures in SLI compared to the standard 980. The 6700K on the Origin is definitely the coolest during idle and under load. All that power when overclocked turns into heat. The MSI ran into some problems with GPU temps with the default fan profile, the 980 was throttling all over the place, but turning back the custom profile solved this issue. 
The dual 980Ms on the SkyX9 performed with expected temperatures and the same for the single 980 on the Eon 17 SLX. The MSI Dominator Pro was the quietest among the three notebooks. The SkyX9 and the Eon 17 SLX with a single 980 was louder than the dual 980M setup on the SkyX9. I thought it was supposed to be the other way around, but I don't know what happened here. Finally, conclusion time. Out of the three notebooks, which one would I pick from a performance and portability standpoint? I think the answer lies itself very well from the whole video. The MSI GT72S Dominator Pro receives our pick for the damn good award. But the story doesn't end there. Eurocom's SkyX9 and Origin's Eon 17 SLX have performed just like what they should, perhaps even better than the MSI, but I can't seem to justify paying that much for a gaming notebook past 3K. But what do you guys think about these three notebooks and which one of these would you actually pick as your ultimate gaming laptop? I will make sure to check all the comments down below and as always, subscribe for more similar content and we'll see you in the next one.